What is it about the French food culture that makes it so influential to cooking all over the world? How come top chefs from all over the world go to France to learn the foundations of hot cuisine from the very best? In order to find out the true answer, I just have to do the same journey myself. With me, I have a great companion and expert. He supplies chefs all over France with herbs that make their dishes elevate beyond the ordinary. Oh. <laughs> Je suis enchanté, oui, finalement. Très de te voir. <laughs> and what we're about to embark on is a journey to 13 different restaurants behind the scenes, yes. trying to get in with the chefs to give you the secrets behind their lives. Vous donnez tous les secrets pour cuisiner des bons produits. They're going to make you the recipes that you actually can make at home. So the top exactly. chefs of France are going to help you get a bigger stomach. Welcome to Paris. We're here to visit former master chef jury member Armandine Chagnon, who recently opened her very own wine bar and restaurant called Poliche. After working alongside some of the greatest names in the culinary world, she now demonstrates the extent of her talent by serving refined cuisine under the motto joy and conviviality. Today, we have the privilege of visiting Francis, among top chefs, most coveted vegetable producer. <laughs> and you're quite happy because you've fairly recently just opened this. Yeah, uh, two months ago. Two months ago. You can smell, uh, smell the painting. This is not the actual restaurant. This is just the cocktail bar. Yes. So we're very eager to see the actual restaurant. Yes, in which the back. Is... Hi, <laughs> <laughs> you walk in and they're singing in the kitchen. That's what happens. <laughs> so, so can we can we join you? For once I'm not afraid, I can go where life leads me. Somehow I know I'll be strong. For once I can touch. Well, my, my first idea was to uh, actually um, have a small tea house, you know, do some simple cakes, a couple of salads, and uh, but here I am. <laughs> When I thought about the restaurant concept, I didn't want it, it to be like fully vegetarian, but I wanted to put like a, a, the light on the vegetables and, the, and to, to tell the world that we can actually do something different from what you can find in most of the vegetarian restaurants. Uh, basically, most of them is like either super salady, very healthy, but sometimes a bit too much healthy. Sometimes you want something a bit more comfortable. Uh, heavy and consistent, and um, in the mean, or sometimes it can be very Middle Eastern, like Lebanese or um, Israeli food, you know. So I wanted it to be uh, something a bit different, like the way that I feel myself at home. So we have vegetarian Wednesday and uh, family lunch on Sundays. I didn't want to have um, a real classical menu, you know, where you pick the, uh, the starter, you pick the main, you pick the dessert. It brought me to the idea of having this menu, simple, just the same menu for everyone, and you just choose the main. I want simple, I want a very good, but simple. Beetroot is like candy. It's yeah. the sweetest thing there is. Mm. Well, that adds the mm. little saltiness to it mm. to balance the sweet. What's it by Volovan? Volovan with some white roots, um, button mushrooms, and it's finished up with a Jerusalem artichoke uh, emulsion. This is lovely because you have the crispiness from the nuts, you have the bready. It's warm and ready flavor, and then that sweet cooked um, artichoke hark, which is fantastic. Are you happy? Yeah. The carrot has a lot of sugar. Nouveau is very good, very tender. There's a lot of heart going into this. Yes, it's very difficult. I really do believe that there's something further than and then the uh, the molecule that you put in the plate. 
If you're cooking with emotions, at the end of it, you feel it. And you, when you're in a bad mood, when you're just working because you have to do it, it doesn't taste the same. And at the end of it, you can feel it when you try it. From the moment that you pick the vegetables or a piece of meat or whatever it is, to the moment that it ends up in the plate, um, there's many people in between, but um, I think that all people we have, there's, there's a bit of our soul, there's a bit of ourselves um, that we're given to the guest. I kind of freed myself from doing what people expected from me. I think I, for a very long time, I cooked, uh, doing things what I thought that people would have expect. You see, so I was putting my, myself some barriers. I'm thinking about the menus and the dishes now. It's more about what do I like more than what people expect from me. We really value to have the best uh, local, seasonal, but clean ingredients as well. Pesticide, less chemicals as possible. Yeah, so the more it goes, the more I try to uh, work only with people I value and, value and people I trust and people who I know uh, share the same interest with soil, um, human values and, and respects and stuff like that. So we've interviewed Armandine, and we know she's a lovely person. We know there's a good atmosphere here. But if we go behind the scenes and ask the staff what they actually think, mm -hmm, I'm going to try and kidnap the sous chef and some others. Chloe, who are you, and what do you do here? I am a line chef. I do three stations at once, which means I run pastry, uh, garde manger, which are cold appetizers, and the hot section, which is hot appetizers and the main dishes. The very different mentality. This femininity that she adds to it just is sensational, and that's why the food is so good. It's simple. It's something that your grandma would make, but that somehow you still don't know how to make because she's just hiding the recipe somewhere in the back of her brain, and you're just, you feel at home here. You come here, the food makes you feel good, the environment makes you feel good. You find the chef's personality in the food. Simple, elegant. The secret is the positivity, I think. Uh, if Sometimes we have problem in the kitchen. Some chefs are like, fuck, we have this problem. No, 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 no. But she's always positive. She's like, OK, we have, we, we're going to do that. No worries, guys. And if you have a leader like that, it's OK. I worked in many places where singing, laughing, um, telling jokes uh, was not allowed. To me, it's the real key of the business is the staff. Okay, when I recruited them, I told them, you know what? I don't care if you don't know what grape is in the Marsanet or what, uh, um, what's the provenance and what kind of milk is in this cheese or in this cheese. I don't care. And you are actually allowed not to know. It's fine. As long as you say, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I'm going to find out for you. And you do it with a smile and you do it and you're considerate and you try to be helpful and grateful and you're kind with people. What's important is to be comfortable, to be happy, to be greeted, to be uh, considerate as a, as a guest, you know. When you're happy in the kitchen, when you're relaxed, you do a much better cuisine than when you're working under stress, when you're, um, when you're stuck into a, a persona that you're not. I worked three months, non-stop, seven days a week, uh, from 8.30 till two in the morning for three months. So I'm sorry, but you can't actually spend three months of your life non-stop if you're not laughing at, at least a beat. When you're working in a good atmosphere in a the kitchen, then the front of house feel it. So obviously they're gonna be more um, cheerful, they're gonna be uh, happier, and that then the end of it. The customer is gonna feel it as well. I love the word aubergiste. It has a connotation more linked to 
the sense of welcoming people and hosting them, you know, than actually doing a very refined food or being very fancy. Uh, I like this kind of simplicity and this kind of uh, kindness. I wanted this restaurant to be open seven days a week, and I wanted people to actually keep this in the back of their head that, oh, I, I want to have a drink, I want to have a meal, I'm going to go to police, it's open. No matter what happens, it's going to be open. Well, she's very much into vegetables. There's the Vegetarian Wednesday. So she's, of course, looking for the very best, and Stefana set up a meeting with the best grocer in Paris. That's where we're going. We met a couple of times recently, but we've never been uh, able to actually discuss real collaboration. So I'm, I'm very happy, and uh, you're my best opportunity, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ouais. I have an idea with us. The multitude of what you're growing is amazing. Of course, that goes to show that there's a good reason why she's here. This is someone she really wants to work with, and I'm giving them time alone so she can cultivate her relationship. Et ça, tu peux manger le fruit Oui, mais en principe, c'est quand il est rouge. Mais là, là, euh... là c'est pas rouge. Je sais qu'il va me moquer, mais oui, j'ai tout. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. On change quand on a envie, en fonction des, des arrivages. Des... Ouais. Ouais. Bon, en fait, j'ai pas de... L'avantage d'être chez soi, c'est que tu vois, j'ai pas besoin de, de passer par 50 000 validations pour changer ma carte. Oui, c'est toi, c'est toi, c'est toi. Voilà. Donc voilà. quand j'ai envie de changer, je change. Quand il mmh. y a un truc que j'ai dans la tête, on le gâte. Il y a plein de choses, je veux dire, il y a plein de choses. Enfin, voilà, il y a plein de choses que j'ai mis au point quand j'étais chez Tarwa. So, Amandine, uh, you've had a walk around now with uh, Laurent and you've found uh, something to hide behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a beautiful kohlrabi, and to be honest, I've never seen a. Kohlrabi is this big. No, neither have I. I, would I was about to say that's the size of a handball. Yeah. And this is actually on your menu. It is. Uh, so Jerry's and I took those are very, very fresh. Uh, Laurent just told me that he actually picked them this morning. Mm. <laughs> Et puis sinon, c'est quoi le projet euh, Potager du Roi à Versailles Alors, le, le Potager du Roi, parce qu'on a fait l'année la, dernière la Biennale du Château de Versailles, mm -hmm. ça, ça a été mis en place pour faire voir aux, aux consommateurs aux, que c'était l'agriculture qui modélisait le paysage français. Donc voilà, donc, on a été plusieurs agriculteurs. Et là, j'ai été approché par le chef jardinier du Potager du Roi, qui est Antoine Jacobson. Euh, et puis du coup, il me dédierait une parcelle plus ou moins de 800 mètres carrés Euh, pour que je puisse faire euh, un peu bah, mon. Comment dirais-je Ma vitrine. Il est dans un traiteur. Il y a des autres hey. choses Ils n'ont oui. pas idée. Non. Martin Wait, wait, you're not going to come, Paris alone. Come I'm back to Paris I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> Hey, it's good in the traffic. <laughs> Bye Oui, salut Bye. <laughs> uh, Together, we're going to cook a vegetarian volovan made with puff pastry. Uh, Jerry's and artichoke, celery, mushrooms, uh, very creamy, very indulgent. Definitely not what you'll expect from a vegetarian dish. Yeah, so we're in the kitchen and you've taken it upon yourself to do vegetarian Wednesdays and there's always a, a vegetarian offer. Yes, always. Volovan is a very classic uh, recipe in the French culinary uh, patrimoine, you know, and uh, but this is one with a twist, so. How do we start? So we start with the puff pastry. So you brush it everywhere, and we're gonna um, put another layer of puff pastry. Okay. Not too much, it's just to allow it to stick together. Like that? Yes, perfect. And we're doing the double layers, why? Yes, just to make it thick and generous. Up, so it's gonna stick together. Ta-da! Okay, so this one is for the um, the real shapes, and you put it on a tray. 
Yeah. You guys work? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to work. Come on. Hey, hey Luke. Hey, Luke. <laughs> you get and we support you. Yeah. Here we are. Well, you're going to work. You find a pastry tray. Come on. Yeah, you're <laughs> Good. This is fun. This is yeah, something perfect. you should be doing with your kids, because it's always fun to really? use this. Yeah. Is now a master at work? Yeah. No, that would be good. Gentle. It's quite important not to put egg yolk on the, um, on the edges, because if you put it here, it's going to stuck and, and it's not going to puff. Oh, right. so if you okay. put it on the sides, it's not going to rise? Yes. OK. Oh. And why are we doing this now? Uh, it's just to make sure that both uh, layers are sealed together. Oh, OK. okay. So the beauty of that is now you're, you're sealing them. Otherwise, yes. they would have risen and they would have it, split. It can happen, yes, yeah. exactly. The next mission is actually to do a circle in the middle-ish. Just a little bit. Yes, and just do this. Oh. Just so, so you're actually just sort of marking it? You're not pushing Indeed. it? Indeed. Yes. yes. So, so this goes in the oven, 180. 180 uh, for? I would say 20, 25 minutes. So the puff pastry is now in the oven, and we're doing the condiments for it. Yes, we're going to yep. prep all the garnish. So here we have Jerusalem artichokes. Lovely looking Jerusalem artichokes. We have uh, mushrooms, celeriac. Celeriac, that's a good big root. Um, a bit of onion. Onion. Classic yellow onion. And the truffle for the very, very last touch. Well, I'm not the fastest person in the world, but there's one. No, no, no. Plus vite, plus vite. Plus vite, plus vite. Faster, faster. OK, now you go. Um, so we're going to use it. It's going to be the base of our cream, actually, for the vol au vent. Yes. Because yeah. um, it has really, when it's cooked, it has a really creamy uh, texture. And it's a bit say it's a bit sweet, you know. It's uh, um, I think it's perfect to do those kind of creams. Yeah, yeah. There's no contest. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is, I need my reading glasses as well, which is oh. this is not a good thing. Are you looking for excuses? Uh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Perfect. Proud moment. Here Half we are. Half an hour later. Half an hour later. <laughs> Amandine, si on n'a pas de topillon de bourre. So if you don't have any jerry's on that choco, if you don't like it, mm -hmm. uh, you can use um, Eliantis. Maybe Eliantis. You can use uh, okay. chervil roots. You can use basically there's many many different roots. Pané? You know, during winter, pané, parsnips, turnips. Even we're gonna cut them in four. Yes, please. Oh, that's for me, of course. There's a competition even in peeling the onion. Yes. Very competitive. Very competitive. OK, here we are. No, 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 It's for the sauce, so we don't need it to be a very, very thin. It's going to be mixed. Right, so this we keep it apart from the sauce. Mm. Sauce pan. Yes. We love, we love copper yeah. here. Plimobile. Plimobile. <laughs> so now that we have the cherries and the matcha joke and the onion, so we're going to use this and this with a bit of butter to, to prep a sauce. So it's going to be like a puree, you know, you uh, cook it five minutes in butter, you add water, you let it simmer mm -hmm. with a lid on it, and then you pass it, uh, you put everything in a blender, thin puree. Very creamy, very rich, and so, still a bit liquid. While you're doing the sauce, I'll be... OK, so you'll peel it yes. and you brunoise it. Brunoise Couple of So, peel. yeah, take the base off. Yes. There so we it's, are. It's steady. Yep. Now you can actually... Uh... Take the top off. It's pretty because we're very... Yeah, we're very well. Look at that. He's hypnotising, isn't he? Yeah. We could look, watch for hours now. For the sauce? You put a spoonful of butter, you add the onion, you let it cook for, I would say, five minutes. Five minutes. You keep it very blonde, no colour at all. You add the Jerusalem artichokes. Five minutes, no colour. You add a bit of water, you cover it, and you let it simmer for, I would say, 20 minutes. OK? So you're going to start to have a bit of a puree, then you blend it, pass it through a sieve, and that's it. You have okay. your sauce. Because you know you never... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. I'm um, just going to put the oven on there. Amandine, 
Amandine, Amandine. From the heat of the oven. <laughs> with the pastry. Look at it, it worked. It worked. <laughs> so now you just take the lid out. Les enfants peuvent faire ça. Exactement. Les enfants, les grands, les vieux, les, les, les petits, les... Oh, look at that. And now you have your little basin in there. And so now, now we can start filling it. Exactly. So, filling. We have the brunoise. Brunoise. Oh, that's, that's hot, that's, that's hot. hot, that's hot. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Very perfect and square. the Jerusalem artichokes and the button mushrooms. Can you see that? We'll put it closer. The other one for the camera over here. And for that camera there. Yeah. People filming with their <laughs> mobile phones. Yeah. Okay. Good. Plus de champignons. Ouais, faut que ça gagne. Il 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 faut que ça gagne. Un spoonful de uh, celery in the top. Without sauce. Without the sauce, yeah. Without the sauce. Without yeah. the sauce. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, very, very, very beautiful. Yes, beautiful. it smells lovely. And you're filling in the gaps. There's a gap there. Okay. See? Teamwork. Okay. Chef. Yes. We're done, chef. And the sauce. And the sauce. And the sauce. Elle est où la sauce? Eh. Sauce is life. Sauce yeah. is life. It has to be generous, right? Yes. Generous with the sauce, and you can see it's going to go it in good. it. And all the way into the pastry. In the pastry. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Mind your How many? How many? If we don't have a truffle. So if you don't no. have a truffle, you can mm. still use some um, uh, grilled uh, hazelnuts. You just chop roughly mm. as, a, as a finish. As a garnish. No roasted. Yeah. What do you need to do to make this really appetizing now? Well, you need the lid on top. A lid on top. Obviously, yeah. you need the lid on top. Wow. Hello. All of a sudden now, that looks like a little pastry. It, it's, this is... A vol au vent. A vol, vol au vent. On arrive avec une assiette comme ça. On a l'impression que c'est une tourte avec beaucoup de viande dedans. Right. Et en fait... Yeah, un, some people expect it to be meaty, yeah. actually, because yeah. the yeah. traditional yeah. recipe is very meaty, mm. you know, with those sweet breads, a little canal. But, I mean, if you want to summarize this really quickly for the audience, what is this? It's a uh, winter roots vol au vent. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is actually trying it. <laughs> Digging in. Oh, wow. Mm. Just as you said, that is comfort food. Moi, j'adore le céleri. Mm. Et puis la, le jus que tu as fait. Donc, euh, c'est avec la, le jus du céleri, un peu, Le jus mis... de, des topinambours. Topinambours. Mm. We're going to say thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm. It was a pleasure. <laughs> bon, appétit. bon appétit. Bon appétit. Il est l'heure de nous quitter. Une cuisine maîtrisée. Euh, moi, j'adore. J'adore. <laughs> Merci. We love your place. We love the atmosphere. Thank We you. would have stayed forever. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>